Hey everyone, welcome to a, another video. Today we're going to be reviewing Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I mean, this is one of the most hyped projects in the MCU or at least to close out this phase on such a high note because one, this is Black Panther Wakanda Forever from the first trailer till now. There's been nothing but hype, you know what I mean? And we've been following that train. So to finally make it here, the end of the road of phase four, we're gonna go into it. So I mean, try and give you our thoughts and feelings on what happened in the movie without going to spoilers. Of course, we'll try and keep it as surface level as possible so that, you know, we don't misstep on our words or anything like that or pretty much spoil the movie in any shape or form so this movie is pretty much about of course we all know the death of chadwick boseman who played t'challa this movie picks up with that but it's also dealing with the fact that how is wakanda dealing with not only the death of their king t'challa but the world and geopolitical aspects that are happening amidst this death of T'Challa and how pretty much you think T'Challa opening up Wakanda and, and particularly Vibranium to the world at the end of the first Black Panther movie was something for the better. Everybody in even in the UN meeting is like, hey, can we get that, you know, Vibranium? But, you know, Wakanda doesn't let it fly. You know, Wakanda is not going to give you the green light. The metal Vibranium that literally founded their country and made them technologically advanced. So, of course, they're not going to give that up. I mean, if you really thought they would, then I don't know what you're on, but... <laughs> Amidst this struggle slash crisis for Wakanda, having to deal with so much world issues and affairs and the nation just trying to progress while having lost their king, another nation comes into the mix, aka the Atlanteans or in this iteration of the movie called Hollow Khans, who is led by this movie's villain, Namor, or as he character says it namor because you know he's got that latino flair when he says that because this is a new interpretation imagination of atlantis for this movie of course because you know you don't want to be like the other brother from dc aquaman mm -hmm. <laughs> so first and foremost george any first general thoughts and feelings that you want to just immediately get out of your system i enjoyed the movie and there were so many aspects of it i think could have been improved aspects that could have been cut you know it was a very long movie I think that certain subplots were underdeveloped and annoyed me in how they were done, but then some others were really well done and I enjoyed how it went, you know? Overall, it was pretty good. And I think as a tribute to Chadwick Boseman, it's just, it's just done so well. And I think that it's really hard to really come up with something as when you lose your lead actor. And it's very sad to have lost Boseman, but the way they've gone about this, very respectful, and the way that they've made this movie, it's just been created so well and forward. It doesn't linger too long, you know. This has happened, let's move on, and it does it really well, and I like everything about that. If you ask me, I, I share the same thoughts as you. I think I, I do want to commend is that from the first movie to this movie, everyone gives it their all, especially in this one considering Chadwick's passing, they are giving it a 10. And I mean, I, that's something I can say is consistent from here to here is the cast. The cast from the first movie till now, they get a step up. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. I'd say M'Baku still is like a bit sidelined, but he is cool for the time he has, even if it's like a little bit, you know, Winston Duke makes the most of it. I, lo I love Winston Duke a lot. I went into the movie and like the first half, I was like, wow, he's not in it a lot. And then it did slowly become more. I was like, oh yeah, I get that. The music by Lud. Wait, I forgot the other, I forgot the dude's name. Ludwig Johansson. If you don't know who he is, like he's done music for, I mean, oh, the one that comes to mind the most famous is his Mandalorian theme. The one, he, he did the Mandalorian theme and that's tremendous. And he did even some of the first music for the first Black Panther movie as well. So that's amazing. I do think the music is very good. And, and I think the costume designs and the, all, all the costumes here are nice. I mean, they're cool. They're slick. Like, that's one thing I'll, you have to give uh, Wakanda credit for. They got, their fashion sense is on point. <laughs> Definitely. If and the, this one, Wakanda Forever, the way the first trailer made us feel, we get that here. The movie, I still would have wanted that feeling. Like the way the first trailer felt, I would have wanted that to have still been in me when I left the cinema after watching this movie. Because not that it's bad, but I felt like if you've seen the second trailer for Wakanda Forever, like for me, that tone or that, that, that general feeling was what this movie felt like to me. Not that they don't handle emotional aspects. They do handle emotional aspects. You get character moments on how each character is dealing with the death of T'Challa, how, how they, each and every one of them, it's affected them on a personal level. From Okoye, to Nakia, to Shuri, and Ramonda, particularly those four characters, the women of this movie, like I said in the first trailer, the women are carrying this movie. And the women, I, I think for the most part in this, most of the time, they're the leading characters of this. 
this. Oh, so sensational. I don't think this is a spoiler or anything because I know certain reviews have addressed this, but this is Shuri's story. It really does clearly hone in that this is Shuri's story and everything for the most part is Shuri focused and how she's kind of having to grapple between the death of her brother. And not only that, but also dealing with the fact that this new nation, this underwater nation is now planning an attack. There is a catalyst for the story that makes Telecom go against Wakanda. But I will tell you this much, Angela Bassett, who plays Queen Ramonda, I mean, we've seen it in the trailers, but it's the scene where it's her at the UN meeting, but it's also cutting between these like soldiers attacking this Wakanda center, this vibranium center. So it's it's her dialogue plus this. And I mean, man, that, that was powerful. And she has very emotional scenes. She's, I dare say it, acting her ass off in this because man, after she's done seeing these very impactful and powerful lines, you're kind of left there like kind of stunned. I dare say intimidated, but you're just in awe of a performance because she's giving it her all. And considering these are all cast members who are close with Chadwick and particularly Angela Bassett who plays Queen Ramonda, T'Challa's mother, you could obviously see she brought this personal level of emotion because she's just acting on emotion and man, it is not, and I think she's got to be a stand-up performance because nothing against the other, other people in this movie, but her scenes are like really good. She acts, to say the least, without question. And I'm, and I'm just at all. It was just all acted so well and I just, it all came together and performances were definitely highlights, I would say. I think another standout would have to be Denai Guerrero as a Koye because she's able to be serious when, when there's these scenes that require her to be serious and really be emotional. She does that well. And there's these scenes where she has to be comedic, a bit more lighthearted. She does that well. I also want to iterate, this is not a spoiler because this, this was an official clip that was released. But when, when they meet Ironheart for the first time and Okoye is like kind of like in warrior mode, her Dora Milaje kind of mindset just to try and get her to come on board with Shuri and her. I mean, that was that, that scene was hilarious because she does this particular face that just makes me laugh. And I, I don't know why, it was just hilarious to me. I'll go with Nakia as well. That scene when she's talking with her and Akoi, you can really feel her pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel the pain all around. And the fact that each character here, in terms of the Wakandans, they do have a level of personal connection with T'Challa. So when they have these emotional and these very heart aching and sad moments, you feel for them because of the connections they had with T'Challa, particularly Nakia, because she loved T'Challa. She was his lover. And so you feel her pain mm -hmm. during that scene we've talked about wakanda a lot now it's time to get to the new civilization the new regime yeah the new regime <laughs> now we got to talk about akukulkan or namor and his people the talokans i wanted to ask you what did you think of namor and his civilization and his people being the talokans in the most you know non-spoilery way i think it was done so well and i think it's quite hard when you have someone like aquaman to not compare to it you know but it's a very different civilization, you know. Atlantis is bright and it's colorful and it's flamboyant. And Namor and Tarokan is much more, you know, you can feel the, the mythology to it almost. Mm -hmm. It feels much more like it's meant to be there, you know. Yeah, I get you. I think that was all done really well. And I do think one thing that did, you know, somewhat get me was how the Wakandans are so advanced with their technology. But with vibranium, but the Talokans seems nowhere near as advanced. Mm -hmm. That kind of like threw me off a little bit. Like I'm sure there's pretty big similarities or whatever. They didn't seem on par with each other in technology. Like of course their battles were epic or whatever. They were really strong, but I think that their technology didn't seem to be equal. I think to make them sort of equal when they fight, I think that's when they do like the traditional way of fighting, you know, with the sticks and stones and all that kind of stuff. Because they don't, they don't really use guns or anything like that. They're really, they're very like tribal, like hand to hand combat. Mm -hmm. I think maybe they're trying to be advanced, but still retain that old fashioned kind of culture. The way like Wakandan is, you see that kind of mesh between future. Uh, um, it's like called Afrofuturism, where you do see the African elements, like the African culture, but woven with this kind of futuristic aesthetic and the futuristic technology and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, you're not wrong, but I think maybe from a design standpoint or a way to sort of distinct them, maybe not being powerful necessarily, but I think the way they just do things is completely different from because they're both different cultures and everything. I mean, that's just me. But I will say this, I, I know it could be a controversial take when I, if I ask you this question, but we had Killmonger in the first movie who people think, who people say is a great villain. Do you think Namor is on that exact level? 
maybe a tad bit higher or doesn't quite match Eric Killmonger from the first movie? I think that Killmonger is really hard to match because he was such a you know, psychological threat as much as a physical threat. You know, he was related to T'Challa. You know, there was a family bond there. And that just really takes it home, I suppose. I think that Namor was really well done. And I do think he was a really good villain. But I think it can be hard to compare when we had someone so good as Killmonger. Because I know people are saying he's the best villain right now. He's not that he's bad. Tanacha Tanakwarta who plays Namor or Namor in this movie. I think he does well. I, what I like about his character, charming, but also evil. Yeah, he's threatening as well. Like he's a good looking guy, but it's also pretty like cunning and evil as well. Really evil in this movie. Cause I mean, I, I've not been aware of the character of Namor, Namor in this case, whatever the crap, whatever pronunciation, but he is like a pretty selfish character in the comic books. He's a very selfish kind of character who only cares about himself. So. I kind of see that here, but they are doing something a little bit new, such different, a different interpretation, of course, because this is not Atlantis. This is them combining the Mayan culture and Atlantis and kind of doing this hodgepodge, which I know, okay, it, 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 which is its own separate topic, of course. But if you ask me, I don't see anything wrong with this race bending or change at all, because for me, I mean, the character of Nemo wasn't particular in the comics, like, he wasn't really of a specific race. And even if we were to do another white guy who was, you know, a villain, which we've seen so lot, so much now, and if you ask me, not, not that it was, not that it sucks or anything, but I don't mind race bending as long as you're not just doing it for just the tick in the box. I love the change with Namor because it kind of adds his own personal flair and it does add a different kind of spin on Atlantis than we're already used to, like with Aquaman, you know? So it's a nice separation between the two, which I love. And I did, uh, and another thing I wanted to point out, the water. Okay, I, I got to see this in IMAX. So this was, I got to see this, this in the in the way it was meant to be. So if you, if you watch this in IMAX, this movie is amazing because that's really well done. Like you can clearly see the characters. It's not like, it's not muddy. It's not foggy, really clear. And I know Avatar is coming out like next month, so there's no comparison. But and I mean, not that, and I don't want to compare the two, but right now, this is some pretty good water CG. Like this and Avatar both look like the CGI for water has been perfected. Mm, very much so. And I like this movie is the way they do CGI in the water. It's very purposely done. Yeah, it's purposely done. It's like if we were to realistically shoot this scene in water, how would it look like? And boom, the movie nails that. But on to another new addition. This movie introduces a character called Ironheart, Riri Williams. And I wanted to get your thoughts on her inclusion into this story and what did you think? Because I know there's like a mixed bag. Yeah. Not a mixed bag, but I know there are people that mind her inclusion. There's also people that are like, she really didn't need to be there. So I just want to see which boat you land on. Because I know after I watched the movie, I just wanted to watch as many reviews as I could because I didn't know where I landed on with this movie. Not that it was bad, but I just wanted to see, okay, do I agree with this? Or do I think, yeah, I don't think I, I, I agree with that. Like that sort of thing. So where do you sit on with the inclusion of Riri Williams, aka Ironheart? I think that if you take her out of the movie and there's not much difference and I think her role could be removed and you'd have just as good a movie but nonetheless I did like her inclusion and it was a good introduction to her character. Mm -hmm. I'm still not 100% sure if this was the right movie to introduce her with. I don't want to give both sides of this. I don't mind her inclusion. Like there is these two sides to it where I'm not necessarily they're bad, nor it's good. I am conflicted. Particularly with the character of Riri Williams, I don't mind her inclusion. If you ask me, they, they, they have like these times of dialogue where it does give you insight into her character. And I did like that because it was kind of making me interested as to wanting to see her character. And of course we know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure if you know, but this is clearly setting her up for her Iron Heart series because she is getting a series. They did announce that. Oh, I see. I didn't, I didn't know that. Either. Yeah, because this was like in phase five and she's getting her own series. So I see why they want to include her into a project like this where she's going to be able to bounce off of characters like Shuri who she spends most of her time with and they do have this kind of bond because they, these are both like tech geniuses so they get to kind of bond with one another and riff off of one another so you, you get to see that bond there so I don't mind her inclusion because you know it kind of gives Shuri another version of herself to kind of be with 
and be able to kind of bond with and it allows for that kind of comedic timing but also you get to see both of them like interact and bounce off of one another which is really kind of sweet considering it kind of gives another sibling for sure i will also like to address that i did feel like this was marvel slash disney wanting them to really include this character because we have a disney plus show so it did also feel like marketing her own series that's about to come soon like next year yeah. I think it's bad because I because I do like the little bit of character because she is because Riri Williams does say some things about her character that does make me excited for her series but I also do think it's Disney also trying to nudge Ryan Coogler into like kind of getting her into the story I, I mean I could be looking at this completely wrong but it does feel like one of those we kind of had to tick the boxes so we have to include another character in this project so that we can set them up into their next project kind of a thing I do get what you mean anything else that you want to talk about I mean there is Everett Ross there's Everett Ross in this movie. He just not that he sucks by any means. Martin Freeman, he's cool. I I do I do like him as a character and I like Martin Freeman. But I also do think he was underdeveloped in this movie. He was kinda just there. Uh, he didn't really do a lot. It was a shame because I did like I like him I liked him in Black Panther One. I mean I don't mind I mean honestly I don't mind his inclusion in this at all. I don't think it really changes anything. I mean I mean Everett Ross is fine. He's 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 although he is just sort of like an outside viewer or like more of like the observer kind of role yeah an outsider looking in yeah it's just like what's everett ross doing he's just kind of doing american government stuff <laughs> and do you have any ratings like what would you rate him man like if you now since we're kind of closing in seven to seven point five seven around seven to seven point five okay I respect that i'll agree with you there but mainly i agree with you there like seven ten point five but i think it's a seven for me not that it sucks it's good for for the movie as it is i am glad they were able to handle not only bring in a new culture and bring in a character like Namor and handling them really well and his side of the story and his people. I am glad they also were able to tackle Chadwick Boseman's passing and the character of T'Challa's death really well. To be able to do the two of those things in a sequel, trying to move on with the most important character being T'Challa of Chadwick Boseman, for them to have managed that in this movie is impressive. And I can't say it's the right answer because I know some people would have liked the recast or whatever, but to me, I don't know if the movie could have done better than a recast because we would be comparing whoever steps into his shoes. We'd be comparing him to T'Challa. We'd be comparing him to Chadwick Boseman. And not that I don't think there could be an actor that could take over T'Challa and be recasted. What Black Panther, the first movie, has achieved in allowing for diverse superhero movies to occur? Like, we wouldn't have gotten Shang-Chi if not for Black Panther being successful as it is. Exactly. That has to do with the cast, particularly Chadwick Boseman and his performance as Black Panther and how strong that resonates with the viewers. Exactly. Because Black Panther is a big character. Like, let's be real. These characters came from comics, but they're not as big as they are now because the movies allow for them to have that status that they have now, that recognition that they have now. And Chadwick Boseman did that with the, Black, with the character of Black Panther. He was able to make that now the most well-known name. And his performance lends to that. So the way they deal with the loss of T'Challa, that part is what I'm surprised by, is that they did it in a way that was respectful. We as the audience were emotionally invested in this and that's what I admire. Ryan Coogler and everybody in the movie that they handled this well. They handled his passing well and his grace and the legacy of this movie. So that is tremendous for me. I think that about wraps it up. We will be doing a spoiler review going into more depth soon. But of course, be patient. Definitely, definitely. Good things will come. Good things will come. And man, good things have been coming to our channel, all right? Before we close out the video, genuine, genuine, bottom of the heart, thank you so much. Thanks again. Those who have been subscribing recently, we, we are about to reach maybe 100. That's so good. We're at 93 right now. And I could have not foreseen this in what, like since we started, I could have not foreseen us reaching 100. And not only that, we got, as of right now, 13K views on the, on our last video being Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, that trailer breakdown. So good. I am beyond stunned because I was not expecting this, particularly this video, to have done the numbers it did. Only as of now, were we getting steam and more than the 30, 20 view count. To surpass that to the triple digits, now to surpass that to five digits now is beyond my level of thinking. As I'm in the final stages of editing, the channel, as of right now, has 118 subscribers. And not only that, the Ant-Man video has 21k views. So, once again, from the bottom of our heart, 
Thank you for your support. Thank you for being patient and supporting us. We hope to be able to keep this going. I hope to keep this success going and this consistency and uh, you guys keep supporting like you do because this is, I think, one of many successes more to come. With that, uh, that will wrap up our review for Wakanda Forever. Thank you guys a lot for watching. Please like and subscribe as that just shows your support to our channel. And see you guys on the spoiler review. Till then, take care and have a great one.